Hello there and welcome to yet another episode of the Builder Story podcast. This podcast series is to is to tell stories about African leaders, okay, people who have done great things in Africa, in Nigeria, who have raised men, who have built institutions, built companies, who are leaders across different sectors and we are going to be bringing them on the show to share the stories. And today we have one of such great leaders, one of such great African leaders. He's a kingmaker in his own right. He has raised men in the advertising industry. He is also the founder of Nigeria's leading articles in branding and marketing communications. He's known the person and the founder of Oxygen Academy, O2 Academy. His name is Ozon Mbanefo. Before we introduce him, right, my name is Akuma Pabio Joseph. Do not forget to follow us on all social media platforms and on YouTube at Sabi Writers TV. This podcast is powered by Sabi Writers Studios. Now to our guest, introducing Mr. Ozon Mbanefo. Thank you for having me. Such a pleasure to have you right here. Same here. So I studied, um, I studied mass communication in school. Oh, okay. And um, along the line, I was really interested in advertising. I didn't know that oh, wow. broadcasting would come my way. <laughs> I, was, I, was really, I was really good in advertising. So when I heard that I was going to be interviewing you or having a conversation with you, I was, I was, <laughs> I was so happy about that. Okay. You're, you're probably referred to as a people-centric person. That's right. Is that right about you? You are very correct about that. <laughs> so how has it been running Oxygen Academy? Um, I'll tell you one thing I always tell people yeah. each time. That I think I am making money having fun. Oh, nice. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yes, because um, it's something that we didn't, um, we, we, we never started out to make money. Mm -hmm. Yes, we started out to have fun impacting people. And so when money started coming, we were much more excited because um, yeah. we can now pay bills. <laughs> yes. yes, you know. And um, I think so far so good, O2 Academy has been a source of inspiration to me and my team because mm -hmm. for every day we wake up we see lives changed we see people having a better life mm -hmm. and for us that is the real essence of life yes that's a real essence of life yeah. and you have worked with so many national and multinational companies like that's right. Santa yeah. Lipton yes yes yeah. actually I have um, spent 75 okay let me not use a percentage yeah so I've spent 17 years, yeah, working in different advertising agencies before mm. I set up O2 Academy. Yeah. So in totality, it's 23 years experience in the brand community. 23 world. years. That's right. You're an authority, sir. Oh, you can you say are. That you are. <laughs> and surprisingly, people don't really don't know where you started from. But I know that you started as an illustrator. Yes. Like, I, yeah. Oh, you don't want to go back to that story. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do. That's the whole essence of yeah. the whole story. Okay. So um, it actually started off at the NYSE camp. Okay. You know, because I was posted to Lagos as a core member uh, from the East because I schooled in IMT in Ugo. Oh. And guess what? I got into advertising through my Kosa dancing. What? <laughs> <laughs> In fact, when I say it, people are like, how do you mean? You really? mean you can dance Makosa? Yes, you know. That was in 2000 when Awilo Longomba. Yeah. Yes, came out newly. And... Um, at the Mami camp, you know, there was this uh, stand and um, they usually play Makosa every evening. So I go there. In fact, the very first day I saw them dancing Makosa, that was uh, Calypso, Coconut Liquor. They yes, had yes, a stand. Yes. So I saw some people dancing Makosa, you know, they brought them to come and dance. And I'm like, I think I should go and display. The very first day I didn't dance. Second day, on the third day, I muzzled up some confidence i got to the stage and guess what i beat those women they were from zaire they brought them so the day of the campfire night the grand finale they did another makosa dancing competition and they were like where's that guy where's that guy where's that <laughs> i entered stage okay with my copper uniform and i you gave it to them i won the competition so on winning that competition, you know, recognition comes with a lot of attention on you. True, true. So there's this guy, because um, they that competition was um, 
handled by Guinness. That very stage for the campfire night. So the guy works with an advertising agency and the agency were the ones that set up that stand. Mm -hmm. And his name is Kelechi Mosu. Presently, he is the MD of TBW and now as I speak. So Beautiful. the guy is very young then. So he walked up to me, he was like, wow, guy, you danced so well. I like you. I said, boss, I like your job. <laughs> <laughs> because after NYC camp, I, 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 I'm on my own. Yes. And he laughed. I remember that day he gave me his card. Because I told him that I would like to work in this kind of place you work, you mm -hmm. know, blah, blah, blah. So I was connected to advertising through that card Kelechi Mosu gave me that day. And guess what? That Monday morning, I okay, it happened on a Saturday. So on a Monday morning, I went for the interview. Guess what? The interview the HR gave us was because we studied MASCOM. Because it was I and my girlfriend then. You know, the girl that was always following me at the NYC camp. So right. I told her, we have a place where we can do our um, uh, one-year um, NYC. And so, NYC yeah. Yes. So we got there. They gave us a test because we studied Masco. Oh. Um, I failed that test with total commitment and zeal. <laughs> I've never seen anyone describe <laughs> I've never seen you know anyone when you describe tell that like that. You failed with passion. I failed. And... She was like, oh, you f are you sure you passed through the four walls of the university? I said, yes. I studied mass communication for my dad. And that's the truth. Okay. Because I spent 75% of my academic life in IMT and with the art guys in the art studio. Yeah. But I studied mass com. My dad didn't want me to study mass communication. Uh, sorry, arts. 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 Mm -hmm. Fine and applied Fine arts. arts. Yes. He believed that, look, artists will end up as a roadside artist mm. that this is not going to make money for him. And he was pushing for mass com or engineering. I said, okay, I'll do mass com. But I spent more time at the art studio. Fine arts, yeah. So I was a master illustrator already. Mm. So when I failed that test, the HR was like, are you sure you passed through the... I said, I did mass com for my dad. And she was like, how do you mean? I said, because I'm an artist. She was like... I'm sure somebody must have told you that we needed an illustrator here. Now you are claiming you're an illustrator. I said, I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to show you. So I picked an A4 paper from her printer and used my barrel pen, not a pencil, a pen, and sketched this woman within 10 minutes. It wasn't even up to 10 minutes. She saw herself. She saw herself life. I showed oh. it to her. And she was like, wow. Oh, wow. And she picked the intercom. And called the guys in the creative oh, studio. Wow. Said, Mr. Abraham, I think we've seen the talent we are looking for. Right there, I knew I got a job. <laughs> that was how I got into advertising because right there, of course, they gave me my employment letter as a staff, not as um, a core member. I wasn't expecting this. <laughs> I really wasn't expecting so it. So when I tell you that Makosa got me into advertising, you can see how. Truly, your gifts made a way for you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so you from know. Illustrator. And um, when I joined them as an illustrator, I noticed in the studio, everybody had a computer. There's this white box. Mm -hmm. In 2000, you don't see computer anyhow. Yeah, yeah, true. White box, long, that looks like it has an ogre. <laughs> and I saw the way they were doing some designs in it. I'm like, wow. This is the drawing I do, and I'm seeing it on the computer. On the computer, yes. And I see a Fanta bottle inside the computer, and I'm like, wow, how did this, this guy do? Because this time I'm telling you, there was no Google, there was no YouTube. All the social media you're looking at, no, there is only Yahoo that was available then, yes, Yahoo Mail. So I discovered that I can't move beyond that level mm. if I continue to do only illustration. In fact, of course, they retained me, but they never allowed me to touch the computer. Why? I'm sorry to say it, but there was so much tribalism. Mm. You know, they looked at you. In fact, they literally tell me, this young man, you should be in Alaba. Where your brothers mm. are selling motor parts. <laughs> How did that make you feel? I, in fact, I... 
I go to the toilet to cry for what they tell me. Mm. And there was this day I was crying in the toilet. And it's as if, because I was even fasting and praying because I just knew these guys are not interested in anything training me, you know. Yeah. They were only sending me on errands. Mm. Hey, go and buy this for, you know. And I'm asking myself, I'm a, I'm a full-fledged graduate and you're sending me on errands. Is this how this thing is? And for one thing, I never wanted to go back to the East because my dad wants me to take over his shops in main market. He had four shops <laughs> in all the German market. And that's not what you want. And that's not what I want for myself. <laughs> and so, this day I was crying in the bathroom. I was so being seriously. And it's as if someone was discussing with me. I heard a voice and it's like, don't you see that the reason why they are sending you on errands is because you don't know how to use the computer. Don't you see that's why they don't even want to teach you. Because sometimes I stand at their back and I say, sir, what is control Z? They say, Omo Ibo, go, <laughs> <laughs> go and buy food for me. You know, I'll go and cry again. Because there was no advertising school. I'm the advertising school now. You are. <laughs> exactly. You, are. <laughs> you know, so when that conversation, I was having that conversation in the toilet, I said, okay, so how do I learn? And the voice said, I will show you how to learn, but you will make a promise on what you will do for me. I knew I was talking, it was God talking to me. And it looked like my mind, I was discussing with my mind, yeah, yeah. you know. And the voice said, I need you to train people free of charge. For real? I'm serious. If I show you how, and if I make you great in the advertising industry, I'm going to show you where and how you're going to get trained. But promise me you will train people free of charge. I said 100%. Mm -mm. And this conversation was more like me talking to myself, but I know yeah. it was God talking to me. You know, because God talked to us through our mind. Yeah. And yeah. I had that agreement that I was going to do it for three years. And the conversation, he said, if you do it for three years, I'm going to give you the industry. Oh, my God. Okay, this is getting deep. <laughs> this is he getting said, deep. The industry, I will, I will deliver the industry to you. Yes, yeah. You know, and... I had that conversation. I left the toilet, got back to the studio. They continued with the Omoibo, this one, da, da, da. About a week after, an inspiration hit my head that I should go to cyber cafes where they do online browse. That those guys who go there to design all this letter-headed forgery yeah. of whatever, exactly. you know, some True. Yahoo boys are mm. there. And that if you go there and claim that this is what you want to do, that you and I know that that's not what you want to do, <laughs> but they will teach you free. Yeah. I always tell people, I learned how to design on Photoshop and Corridor through Yahoo boys in the business center. Because those guys were doing those things and they were so inspired and I don't care about what they do. I just know they can do this thing. So they started teaching me. And when I learn, I go to the office and practice it. So when I get to the office, I discover that by seven, six, seven, my bosses had gone home. I memorized their password and I opened the system. <laughs> <laughs> and I start practicing what I learned at the all night browser. Mm. And shortly, they recruited some two guys, Ndo Kakade and Fumi Uzuo. They were young people. They were not tribalistic. In fact, we had a drink or two because I knew that, look, I need to, need, I need to need penetrate these guys. Yes. yes. And those guys, they just liked me and they started teaching me concept origination and image manipulation because in art direction, it's not graphics. Graphics is important. You need to understand yeah. layout, fonts, colors, and all that. But you need to know how to tell a story using an imagery. It's called image storytelling. Yeah. And concept origination, how to connect a brand through an image storytelling with what the brand needs to tell its consumer. So mm -hmm. they, they taught me how to think in terms of concept origination and of course, because I have the original talent. Sure. The very first brief I handled, I stole that brief. Mm. You know, when you go 
active work. Like <laughs> my boss, they gave them a brief. I had to go and photocopy the brief. And I conceptualized it. It was for Limca. Yes. This was happening in 2001. And I did the design. And of course, our MD, then Victor Debra, he is the account, is the is the client service head. So he took that particular design without showing it to my bosses. Yeah. To Cook. Because then Cook just bought over Limca. And lo and behold, Cook approved that design it was on truck back it was on billboard all over lagos bro that's how your boy blew <laughs> <laughs> immediately this thing happened the md got me my own system dell i don't forget that system it's the only black system in that studio black billy lawson i got my own system they stopped sending me on errands that's how that's how all that, all that stopped the, my respect Green. showed up nice. straight up I come into the studio like a golden child you, you can, I'm untouchable <laughs> <laughs> so every brief that was coming Calypso Coconut Liquor and guess what they will give the brief to everybody all the art directors mine will get approved how did that how did that how were you able to handle the atmosphere because I know the atmosphere in office it was changed. it was it was, it was um, I call it the turnaround of the Lord. You know, when you have been the rejected, the, the cornerstone. They have they, been rejected. They have yes. been rejected. And now, the people see you and they are like, how did this boy do it? Yeah, I now join for, for meetings. Mm. When I'm supposed to be downstairs buying food. I now go for meetings at the client's office. I now quite, meet well, honestly. That was quite a promotion. My, my entire life, there was this joy. And I was working with so much passion. Sometimes all through the night, I'm working at home. Mm. You know, I'm doing everything because I now know that I'm being appreciated. And that my work will see the light of the day. Yeah. yeah. And you know, when God sees that you're beginning to show a lot of interest in a thing, he starts opening more doors. More doors. Guess what now happened? An agency called Insight Communications called me for an interview. I went for the interview. Lo and behold, they employed me. They gave me a letter. How much? My salary moved from 20K to 120,000. My entire story changed. <laughs> then I had a car, a car loan of 300K. Now you can imagine your salary is 120K. Yeah. You had a car loan of 300K. It's not a problem paying off my car loan. It is not. It's not. I wasn't at Insight up to two weeks. In fact, by the second week, an agency called DDB called me and added 50% on top of my salary. <laughs> <laughs> on joining DDB, worked on several big brands. It was not up to eight months. An agency called TBWA called me on the island. So mm -hmm. they were pushing me. So I, I was more like a star. You know, from TBWA, I didn't do up to two years, a year plus. There are about an agency called TBWA called me. Uh, sorry, um, Bates Kose mm -hmm. called me. From Bates Kose was when, you know, it's as if it's, it's like an, a, an occult person that had a, an agreement with devil. And the time to pay back don't reach. You forgot to pay back. They will come and knock on the door that have you forgotten your own us? Yeah. That was what happened between me and God. Because I was now becoming very successful. My salary was increasing and everything. I was now living a flamboyant life. You know, buy this car, buy another car, living large, you know. And God tapped me one day. He said, do you remember I had a deal with you? <laughs> so you completely forgot about that deal? Of course. I, you know, because <laughs> I was already having a good yeah. time. So I forgot that. I promised God that I was going to train people free of charge. Guess what? I was broken mm. because I realized I was only taking, taking. Yes. I wasn't giving back to the source yeah. that helped me. That was when I turned my two-bedroom apartment to the Nigerian leading advertising school. Oh, okay. Okay, so this is the <laughs> this is the core of today's conversation. That's right. This is the core of today's conversation. Yeah. And so far, 
in the, the story you have just shared with us. Yeah. All I see is someone will hear a story and think it's a fairy tale. It's mm. too good to be true, right? Ah. But all I see is a man who was intentional about learning. That's right. You wanted to learn and you wanted to learn at any cost. That's it. And you saw yourself in a higher pedestal yeah. than an errand boy. That's it. If I could call you that That's at right. the point. <laughs> so, so far, what you what you have learned, what would you like to tell um, viewers out there or entrepreneurs out there listening to you? Yes. Their starting point. Mm. Address it. Because some people mm. think that starting small is a problem. Oh. You see, um, the way I like to put it is money is not the key driver for starting any business. It's not money. So what is? The key driver. Yeah. And when I say it, most times people think I'm just talking uh, because I, it's passion. But sometimes you would say that passion is not enough. No. Passion, I always put it, will pass you on to greatness. That's why it's called passion. Pass you on. Word. Because... <laughs> If it is money, when you stop seeing the money, you will stop. Mm -hmm. If it is fame, when you are no longer famous, you will stop. Determination is fueled by passion. Wow. If you don't like a thing and you are doing that thing, you yeah. are committing what we call a spiritual suicide. Because your spirit is not in it, but your body is just moving because you just need the money. Money is important. Money is actually an enabler. It's not the key thing that makes it work. So uh, it's not, it's, it's passion. It's, it's what you love to do. That thing you would do even if you're not making money. Mm -hmm. And when I say passion, I tell people, passion is the only thing that has taken men from grass to grace, from nothing to so much. Even Jesus Christ was what he is because of his passion. That's why it's called the passion of Christ. His passion drove him to the cross. It is passion that made Michelangelo paint the angels, paint the 12 disciples on the ceiling of Sistine Chapel of Rome. Mm -hmm. And when they asked him, in fact, somebody came to visit him and was like looking for him. And he was painting in one corner that you can't even see. And the guy called his name, Michelangelo, yellow, yellow, yellow. You know, the, 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 the echo. The echo. Yeah. And he answered, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> so the guy was like, Michelangelo, how are you, this angel wing you're painting, nobody sees it mm -hmm. from the main uh, um, church podium. How? Why are you spending so much time on that place? And you know what he told him? If nobody sees, God sees. Right. That is passion. So, so you're saying that entrepreneurs out there should just be fueled by their passion. passion. Every other thing will align. When you are passionate, you will be passed on to greatness. Passion is what even helps you get focused. Passion is what wakes you up in the morning. Passion is that thing that wake up a man, a woman, midnight to write stories mm -hmm. that can change the world mm -hmm. while others were sleeping. Beautiful, beautiful. Passion is what will wake you up in the night to continue your journey. That's right. So, at what point did you start the three years free teaching? Okay. So, um, point of correction, I had an agreement with God for three years, but I did it for four years. Great. Yes. So, when I got to Bitkose, of course, I had an encounter with God. Is there another story of his own, mm -hmm. you know? Okay. And I turned my two-bedroom apartment to a classroom. So my parlor was the classroom. And I started with five students. And I got those students through the church because I couldn't go on the streets of Lagos to be asking people, so your closest, your closest community. Yes. yes. So from church and some in my streets at Morgan Estate. So I got about three of them from church and two from my street, mm -hmm. you know, and I have the classes on Saturdays. And of course, they all graduated. And guess what? They all got jobs in advertising agency. Oh, that's beautiful. In fact, one of them even got a job in a multinational, MTN. That's great. So it, it became a word of mouth thing. 
So, so it, and yeah. You didn't just establish yourself as someone who was doing what God asked you to do. You established yourself as a great teacher. That's it. Because I am passionate about advertising. Yeah. I was so passionate that I don't sleep normal hours. I, I sleep half. I wake up. I'm on my system. I get to the office. I'm doing stuff. You, you know, because when you're being, when you're doing stuff and you're getting appreciated, mm -hmm. you appreciate as you are being appreciated. Yeah. You know, so... That training blew, so to speak, because they go and tell, and mm. our another session will have double. <laughs> so, and it's usually six months because I was the only teacher. So I also now started having some of my friends in the agency. Yeah. There was this girl, Neka. She's a copywriter at Base Coast Eden. Neka, she's in France now. She's married to a white. Oh, you know. Okay. Yeah. Neka, an amazing lady. You know. So she joined me. So she was teaching copywriting. I was teaching art direction. Then later, one other lady, Sylvia, she joined and was teaching strategy. So we were complete because, you know, in an ad agency, it's usually strategy. Yeah. That's account management, yes. copywriting, then ad direction. Then yeah. there was no digital, so there was yeah. no need for. So, and after class, the students are happy. We'll be strolling down to the from the estate, from my place to the estate gate. They are asking questions. It was fun. And from there, I moved to a duplex. So I now turned my entire garage to the classroom. And it became bigger. And then the training moved to from only Saturdays to weekdays. So I now train them at midnight. At midnight. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I talk about passion, it's it. Passion can make you go any extent. Your story is quite it's quite a turnaround <laughs> at midnight. Midnight. Because and they all came. Oh, big time. And you know what? They all come from 7, 8 and wait for me. So I close around 8.30 or sometimes 7.30, mm -hmm. but I'm usually at home from 9.10. So once I come home, I just park the car, I go upstairs first, do some abracadabra with my boys and my wife, you know, just get them, you know, to see their dad and blah, yeah. blah, blah. It's strategic. Yeah. Just in my mind, let me just do and go downstairs. <laughs> so I now move downstairs from 11.12. And we train from 11, 12, 1, 2. Around 2.30 or 3, we sleep. And we only sleep for three hours because 6 a.m., we must wake up and everybody has to leave. So some of them, we are working in restaurants, some are working in bars. And I'm talking about people who don't know anything about advertising. They don't know jack about it advertising. It was a dedication for me, the oh, dedication, sure. the commitment. It's passion, it's passion. That's what passed And you me did that for four years. For four good damn years. And I was even using my salary to put the place in shape. In fact, I have videos. Oh, <laughs> I dear. have videos, yeah. Oh, you know, you need to see the garage. All the tables were white with colored uh, rubber seats, yeah. you know, different colors. And I made sure the place is so beautifully done. I painted all the walls white. You know, we had a projector. In fact, at some point, I was using my TV before I now bought a projector. You know, saved money from my salary, bought a projector. Because I had to close that part where you pull down for garage. You know, yeah, that yeah. iron. Yeah, so that that's part, what yes. I pulled down. And you use a tarpaulin, white tarpaulin. So you won't even know that is a wall. You would think, you won't know that is a it's tarpaulin. A, yeah. You know, so, and that was when, because we were getting results, they were getting jobs in advertising agencies. Mm -hmm. The industry started recognizing us. Then I started inviting top industry experts to come as masterclass instructors. But at the time, would you? At the time, would, yeah. did you officially announce it to be Oxygen no. Academy? No, I already have the name registered, but I didn't put it out that this is what I'm doing and okay. blah, blah, blah. I was only focusing on producing results. You okay. see, because people don't respect you because you had a press conference and you showed up and, um, mm -hmm. you know, you announced. No, they respect you because of the results, the problems you're solving. Yeah. So I was already getting people to have jobs in advertising agencies. And the agencies, they get jobs 
get to now know that there was a place where they got they trained. Learned. Yeah. So with that, I started inviting some of my colleagues and people from, you know, top industry experts. Mm -hmm. And one of them, the very first industry expert that I invited then was Neno Nyawuchi. She was the head of strategy then at uh, TBWM. And she came and she did so well. Then I invited Alero. She's now a senior marketing manager at, uh, I think, Uwando now. You know, I invited her. She was an account manager then. And she came. I invited my creative director. He came. And I kept on doing videos. Because you see, when you don't put out your work, you are like a guy waking a girl in the dark. Only you know what you're doing. The girl doesn't know. Mm. So I was always filming it and putting it on YouTube. So it's usually an evidence to show this is what we are doing. And you're also creating memories. Creating. And memories. And they're all there on YouTube now. <laughs> so I can actually go back and say, okay, this is oh. how we started. And really get inspired. That's exactly. a real inspiration right now. In fact, we said at some point, we're going to have our throwbacks. So we'll show all those times when we were, you know, our early beginnings. Yeah. yeah. So with that, you know, the school, the school started getting a lot of popularity. Then we had our first um, outing. We got some sponsorship from... Uh, uh, um, Nigerian distilleries, you know, and we had our first launch of Oto Academy at oh, Zen Garden. Beautiful. Yeah, in Ikeja Jiare. So that was when it was officially known. And my MD then was the guest, the, the special guest of honor. <laughs> God bless that woman. Bumi uh, okay. You know, she was my MD because then I've joined an agency called one for one worldwide. I didn't mention okay. that yeah. because I started it at Bates Cousin. Then I moved to one for one worldwide. I, I got more serious. That was when I moved to the garage, uh, the the duplex. Yes. Yeah. And I told my MD because one day she called me. Said, "Uzon, why are you doing this? You're teaching people free. Why? Are you interested in a political office in future or what? What is it?" <laughs> I said, "Ma, that's what God told me to do." He said, really? God told you to teach people free and you're using your salary? I said, yes. She said, I will come. And I invited her. She came for that event, you know, and that was how Auto Academy got recognized in the advertising industry. You see, I've, heard you, I've heard you mention a lot of names, people that came through for you, that helped you teach the students student, at the time. Yeah. And it just shows me that because you are, you are a person of value. That's you're right. a person that they saw that she was hardworking. Exactly. It was easy for them to come, leave whatever they were doing to attend to what you had. And, and right it. now, you're spoken about your general manager at the time. That's it. You, you know, people can only give you free if you give others free. If I was collecting money then, they wouldn't look at it from the angle of, okay, um, we are making impact. They will see a business. They're not, they yeah. won't see a, a social uh, entrepreneur, yeah, yeah. Or someone who's so you know trying to help impact, him, exactly, yes. social impact. So, and um, as at that time, when we decided to now move from the garage to our academic complex, mm -hmm. was because of numbers. It was growing. Yes, oh. people were getting jobs, and you know, <laughs> application. In fact, when we blew, was actually when we trained a security personnel and turned him from a security personnel to an art director with insight communications that was when we went viral because this guy was a security personnel, personnel. with halogen security earning just some minimal amount of money that i don't want to mention who for had some no reason. idea of advertising before and he, he met you. doesn't he, he in fact is not even a graduate nothing kind of not, mass, mass no, 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 no. he can only speak english <laughs> wow, and, and you guess what? Him around. We trained this guy, and on graduation, he did a test with inside communications. Because one of the things we do is towards graduation, we, we put up a pitch, more like a competition, and mm -hmm. we invite industry experts to come and see the students work. And that was a pretty smart move that we still use today. Yes, so yes. when they come to see their work, they shop for talents. 
<laughs> yeah. That's so impressive. yeah. So so one of those uh, competition, his creative director, the creative director of Inside Communications, Shimo Kenningbe, he came, saw the guy's work, and I told him, your boy did this, you'll get mad. <laughs> it's like it's a lie. The guy came, presented the stuff to him at Sheraton Hotel here, mm -hmm. and he was like, wow, and he invited him for a test, and the guy did better than every other person that they wanted to employ at that time. And that was a breakthrough or a turning they, point, they, was it? They employed him. And the good thing is, we did a video. So immediately he got that stuff. <laughs> Let me tell this part that people didn't know. Just as he got the employment, I told him, I said, when will, is your last day as a halogen, as a, as a staff of a halogen yeah, yeah. security president? He said, next week. <clears throat> Excuse me. I said, we are coming with a camera. We're going to film you on uniform. <laughs> because we need to tell the story. We're going to film you when you are still there. And we'll, we'll film you when you resume. And you need to watch that video. It's still on YouTube. I will go back and, and check it out. And guess what? We gave that video to Lena Ikeji. She carried it. Hmm. And that video, phone calls. People that wanted to register. For the very first time, we had over 40 something to 50 people for one session. Mm. That was when we moved to our new academic complex. Oh, that's really, really And the really rest, beautiful. they say, well, that's really, is it's history. history, right? <laughs> that's, really, that's really impressive. That's right. Um, I've noticed, I've noticed, I've noticed the art of your storytelling. That's it. <laughs> and it, it's, it's great, it's worthy of note to, and to know that businesses now are now adopting adopting the the option or, or the the, the factor concept. of storytelling yeah. concept of storytelling in their businesses yes. and that's something you have been doing yes. for some years now yes we know that if anything happens without you telling the story it never happened yeah yeah if you don't tell it it never happened and we understand that you also need facts to back up your story mm. and that was why we were filming we had pictures and videos when students were sleeping in the garage. <laughs> it's on YouTube. That's quite that's quite a story. Yeah. That's quite a story. So how how long has it been right now in the in, in the business, the advertising okay. industry? We we've trained people for the past 13 years. 13 years. Yes. Auto Academy started in 2007. I got into advertising in 2000. 7 years after I started the advertising school oh. while still working with different advertising agencies. So after the fourth year of doing it for free, you began to charge? Yes, I began to charge. That was when I moved to our academic complex. Which is wh where it is which right Which is now. where it is now. Oh. So I began to charge. I had staff team and the school started running on a curriculum because before there was no curriculum. There was no, curriculum, there was no, curriculum, there was no, right? there was no structure. So we built it from where it was coming from to a place where it can run on its own. And that was when I bowed out from the agency where I was working. So this is very important because I know that a lot of people are watching. What structures, how were you able to, because I know that running a company is quite tasking. Yeah. It involves a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And you ca it cannot be a one-man army. Mm -hmm. You have to employ a lot of hands. Yeah. So what was the structure you had put in place for pressures to run smoothly, for um, bringing in more people? Yeah. What was the structure like? Okay, like I said, it's not the money. Because um, if you're looking for the big money to now put together a big structure, it's going to break you. As a matter of fact, you will almost not succeed. Mm. So you start small. I started with two staff. And that two staff, they were doing the work of 50 staff <laughs> or 30 or 20 staff mm -hmm. team because I don't have the money to pay the entire um, personnel that I will need to really put the big structure yeah, in place. Yeah. So those two staff I had helped me to understand and test run a lot of things and perfect certain things and see where needs and where there is no need for a personnel. Mm. So with that, we increased to five. And from that five, we increased to 12. And that's it. So... And today now, we now have contract instructors who come to teach based on 
the days that they have lectures and we have over 30 of them beautiful yes so uh, you find out that if if we had started immediately to get 30 people you know yeah, 12, it have been I a mean, lot. It, it's good we, we will fail <laughs> it have been a we will lot. fail so you start small and and you keep scaling it and you learn through what dynamics and things that come your way yeah so there's no hard and fast route you just have to start small Take and, your time. and be checking yeah. things and you must also be present for example today i am here and the academy is running i don't have to be there mm. i can travel in fact last week i was traveling all through i was not around for the past two weeks and these students nobody noticed that i wasn't around mm -hmm. yes why because we now have an auto structure that can run on its own but then hmm they no bomb me make I no day for two days. <laughs> one one day alone, <laughs> there will be no it, it, classes. It's so beautiful how far you have come. Yeah, it's, it's so beautiful how you far you have come. Mm. But by the time we come back from the break, we'll talk about what your concept of leadership is, awesome. what your concept of raising men is. Awesome. Then we'll talk about more other things Big time. about Oxygen Big Academy. Time. Thank Big you so time. much. Thank you. Too. All right, so right right now we'll go on a quick break, and by the time we come back, the conversation starts. Don't go anywhere. Tales from Africa aren't just stories. They are living pieces of history passed down from one generation to another, celebrating the true spirit of Africa. Join us on a journey into Africa, the motherland, the cradle of civilization. Alo by Sabi Writers takes you to the heart of African narrative. It is an online marketplace to find, shop, and enjoy your favorite African stories. Suspense. Why is mother's phone not going through? Betrayal. But you said you loved me. Tragedy. <laughs> Vengeance. His grandmother will pay for this. Mystery. <laughs> and romance. I will always love you, Ritzy. All available on Alo by Sabi Writers for 1,000 Naira only. Visit alo.sabiwriters.com today to experience storytelling like never before. Hi, my name is Tade Kaj, the MD of Whip Africa. This is Build a Story on Sabir Writers TV. You know, this is where you want to be. You want to learn how to build, what will change your life, your business. You can't go anywhere else except on Sabir Writers TV, on YouTube. You know, you will learn how to build. Build a story. Where else do you want to go? This is a place. I'm happy to have you right here. I'm so happy you did not leave. We have been in conversations with Mr. Ozun Mbanefo, the face behind Nigeria's leading art school in terms of branding and marketing communications. And so far, it's been one of an inspiring story. I have been inspired truly by the story he has shared and how far he has come. And it's such an honor once again to have you right here with us. Thank you so much, sir. Going straight into the second phase of the conversation. That's right. How would you describe your leadership, your leadership um, concept in the structure and the organization that you have been able to build? Okay, so um, I always say it anytime. Leadership is influence. Leadership mm -hmm. is not control. Leadership is not forcing people to do stuff. It's influencing and inspiring people. In fact, at the academy, um, they don't call me provost, they call me CIO, meaning chief inspiration officer. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I I just inspire them to do more because people can go any extent when they are inspired, mm. when they are encouraged. And you talk people up, not talk them down. down yeah. You can talk them down when it is important, when it, you know, because at some point they, they begin to feel, ah, Mr. O will always just heal me yeah but if you do wrong i'll correct you i will tell you what you didn't do right but the next moment i see you i say you're a great guy you're doing well that's great awesome you know because it, we have a lot of negativity already already in the around around the atmosphere you know so 
the more you can give them the positive, the better they can give you their productivity. That's great. So, yeah, leadership is influence. I see why they call you people centric. That's it. <laughs> I see why. I see why. Yeah. And um, the second thing is the concept of uh, carrots and the stick. And I use the carrot and the stick because you see, when you keep spoon feeding people with the whole well done, I like this. And even when they are doing wrong, you're praising them. Uh, it's not going to help them. Exactly. So what I usually do is the sandwich method, which is, you're an amazing guy, you're doing well, but you see, I didn't like the way you handled this project and I know you can do better because you've been so amazing. You see, I started with a praise, I sandwiched the correction and I hail you back. So the guy or the lady will want to keep doing good stuff. Except when you now notice that the person is no longer... Um, what's the word to use? You know, there are people who just don't want to, you know, uh, get better. You know, not you, putting their best. exactly. You, you've spoken to them, you've inspired them. So it's like dragging somebody who wants to sleep mm -hmm. for a run instead of a person who wants to jog. Mm -hmm. You will run with you. So such people, ah, I have to constantly now be on your case because at this point it becomes a, a function of discipline mm -hmm. the person mm -hmm. and with that uh, at some point you just get the person to not influence the other team members because yeah. if a person is doing wrong and you keep encouraging the person you don't it's going to, affect the it's going to just tell others that this is possible and before you know it it becomes a very messed up structure mm. at the O2 Academy it's a very highly disciplined, structured place. It's so disciplined that if you come late to the academy by five minutes as a student, we'll send you back home or you pay what we call a pizza fee, which is 5K, and that 5K will be used to buy pizza for those that showed up on time. I like that. And it is structured in such a way that it is on your admission form. So you can't even say you're not doing that. And for staff, if you come late, <laughs> by five minutes, you're going to get a query. And when you get query up to three times, they deduct your salary by 10%. Won't people think that's a bit too harsh? Yes, it's harsh. But guess what? I am more harsher, if there's a word like that, <laughs> on myself. Because as the provost, if I come late... I will give 50% of my salary. 50%? Yes. To them. Because there's no way they will know that mine is deducted. So that 50% will be shared amongst the staff. And they can ask my staff team for the since inception of O2. I've not been one minute late. That is quite a strategy. <laughs> that is quite because, a strategy. Because the reason why they call us African time. Right. You see, you won't hear European time. You won't hear American time. It's only Africa. Why? Because we've not learned the concept of discipline, especially in the area of our time. So we are trying to re re redirect that concept yeah. and change that notion which says that Africa is in discipline. We want to let them know especially the Europeans, that that thing they believed about Africa no longer applies. No longer exists, no longer applies. That's right. So that's the reason for that level of discipline, especially in the area of time. And if a student will miss class, you have to do us an email. You don't just miss class in O2. And if you do us the mail, that mail is to identify the day you missed that class so that the instructor who took that particular class mm -hmm. will do you a makeup class. Okay. And every student is expected to meet a certain quota of attendance. If not, you will not collect our certificates. I, I want to say something. <laughs> Can I say it? Say it something. <laughs> this is like uni days all over again. No. You see, I, we operate what we call the concept of foundation. When okay. you come into O2 first, you would think it's it's a very, I call it, we organize things in a disorganized way. <laughs> you, you would think it's just a very free place, you know, yes. like everything, because it's fun, there's music, 
the teachers, they are young people, everything is but we are disciplined. Yeah, I like that. I really we like are it. disciplined. There's a clocking. If you come in, everybody in fact yeah, as you register, you have your biometrics. Mm-hmm. So with that biometrics, you can't it can't be the computer now. So this is not a function of you sign because we yeah. started with the signing thing and people were signing for others. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know. And the problem is you paid for this thing. Why don't you get the value for what you paid for? So the whole aim of this is just to instill it's, discipline. Instill discipline that's really and get them to get the training proper. Well done. Well so done. that's that's what the leadership thing is all about because everything rises and falls on leadership. Mm. And I see the way you have replicated yourself in your in your people. That's you right. Replicate yourself. Yes. And I, I I'm, I'm happy that you don't hold back. Exactly. In terms of whatever knowledge you have, you mm. let it go. Yeah, I let it go too because it, it, that's the only way they too can transfer it. You know, when you meet a person that's passed to O2, they will tell you that the, the inspiration in O2 that is as if once they come into the academy, every of their problem just goes. Why? Because it's in everything we do and it's embedded in every one of our staff team, including the security personnel. Mm. He sees you. Ah, oh guy, they look good though. You know, so because they see me do it, they see the associate provost do it. So it it goes round. Like I said, everything rises and falls on leadership. I really want to affirm affirm you in in the way you have been able to provide an environment especially in a creative space yes an environment that is not toxic an environment that is yeah. filled with love and filled with great culture and discipline that is great that's something that people really want these days it's deliberate so so far has it been working has it been, has it been working with creatives i said it's deliberate in fact thank you for saying that because yeah. immediately you said it that i'm like wow <laughs> I, I couldn't wait for you to <laughs> yeah because we found out that positivity helps creativity. Yeah. Yeah. Without positivity, there can be creativity. When a mind is positive, the mind is flexible. Hmm. And it's only a flexible mind that can come up with creative concepts. Creative things, yes. When you are restricted, you are afraid, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are you, you are um, limited to certain things. Trust me, you're, you're in a box. The reason why people have creative blogs, like I said, is most times they want to create stuff that looks good. In fact, that's how I teach my class. Don't try to create a beautiful art. Go and have fun, my friend. (laughs) Don't try to create an ad. Go and have fun. When you have fun, people want to watch your fun. Haven't you noticed in the music industry, most of the songs that people like are songs that don't make sense. (laughs) They are not saying any serious thing. (laughs) And people are dancing to it because that guy entered the studio to have fun. You hear somebody saying Zazu, Zazu. There are people, that's the demographics that love that song. And it's because it speaks to their brain wanting some level of freedom. So you give people freedom to express themselves through positivity that helps for creativity. Yeah. And it is deliberate. And that's what I'm and trying I'm to so say. I'm so happy about that. Yeah. So you surround yourself with a lot of young people. Oh, yes. And right now we live in a, in a society that is fast paced. Internet is everywhere. Yeah. Social media is actually influencing a lot of things. Yes, so. And just before we went on break, or I think after we went on break, I think we're talking about how the young people do not really like processes. And um, you go on Instagram right now and you see, let's say you see your a young person sees another young person maybe in the mid 30s or maybe early 40s doing a lo- doing well yeah. and the young person fails to realize that that person has paid his or her dues yeah. and went through a lifetime of processes so the young person will just want to go there without going through processes so please take us through the processes of life and speak to our young people out yeah. there and uh, what, what i will have to say to every young person is the fact that you know i always put it this way if you are not if you're not ready to go through a process, you will not be processed. Mm. Because before you have a pot of soup, 
those ingredients had to go through a process mm -hmm. before you can have that beautiful soup. Yeah, true. And so you are like just an ingredient. You've not gone through a process and you're expecting to taste good. It doesn't mm -hmm. work that it way. Doesn't, it doesn't so there's a process you had to go through to help you become who you are designed to be. You now have a story. I always tell them that, you know, do you know there was a time then when I was with that first ad agency? I remember one day that I had to give my transport money to the office assistant so that he can go downstairs and be drinking to enable me walk <laughs> with my boss's system. <laughs> do you understand? I do. I, I had to go through a process that processed me. And today, I am what I am by the grace of God. Yeah. <laughs> so, process helps you. Like, you see some people, they say, oh, my boss is so mean. He kept in the office till 10 o'clock, till 11 that's a very wicked man, blah, 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 blah. That your boss was designed and orchestrated by God to make you go through a process. But because you don't understand it, you see it as punishment. I'll give you an example. Do you know that the Chinese, they have this salt water where they get fish and each time they bring fish to the mainland the fish is still and they discovered that that fish being still was because it had hours before it would get to the land so they installed fridge in the trawlers you yeah. know the fishing trawlers mm -hmm. and even when it enters fridge it gets to the mainland because it's blocked by the time it melts it's still because chinese they love fresh, fresh fish, fish yes. And one day, one of the fishermen was mistakenly got some fishes and got it to the mainland by mistake. They didn't know they had a shark, a baby shark. They caught a baby shark. In the okay, first off, they started creating ponds, you know, so they can keep the fish in the pond in the trawler. Yeah. So that it will still be in the water while they bring it to the mainland. Yes, yes. And yet the fishes will still be still. So one day, one of the fishermen got a fish, you know, they, they caught some fish and allowed, you know, by mistake, they caught a baby shark in the pond, in the mm -hmm. trawler. By the time they got it to the mainland, they noticed that the fish is not still. They noticed that they were very fresh. So while they were bringing them out, they noticed there was a baby shark in it. And you know what that baby shark was doing? He was constantly chasing them around, biting some. <laughs> and <laughs> in the process of them running around, they were fresh. Because they discovered that while those ones were still still, was because they are just in a small pond, they are not moving around. Okay. So because they are not moving around, when they get to the land, it's still. So because of that baby shark chasing them around, they were as alive as what they because experienced they in the active. ocean because they were active. And that was how they started putting a baby shark in every time yeah, okay. they are bringing a fish. And what people don't know that in life, you need a shark. So are you saying, I just want us to clarify that part. Yes. Are you saying that it's, it's okay or it's, it's okay to accept bad bosses? Okay. I'll tell you one thing that most young people don't like to hear. Bad bosses are actually the best bosses. I have been there. Some of the best character molding time in life is the hardest time of our lives. It's actually when you encounter problem mm -hmm. that you remember God, that you want to pray that you want to now think deep and seek God. When things are plenty and so good and beautiful, you don't remember God. Is that how it's supposed to be, though? No, it is allowed because it is meant to help you get to the next level. Discomfort is the only thing that takes you to a comfort zone. 
<laughs> your comfort zone is your prison yard. Anytime you feel too comfortable and everything is just there, you won't grow. You can't go to the next level. It is actually the discomfort that gets you to see you need to improve. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, ask people, they'll tell you it is because of that bad boss. I decided to go and learn and learn more. And today, I'm where I am. Some of the people that has treated me badly in my beginning days, yeah. I bless God for those guys. I was going to say Because that. if they were not treating me that way, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have cried in the toilet and seek God and get to where I am today. Yeah. So the problem is when you're going through that Hiroshima, that problem, that Wahala, we yeah. only see the problem. We don't see what is embedded in the problem. You don't see the silver line. You don't see it. where God is actually taking you to. Yeah. And most of the time, we hate. We now walk in bitterness and lose the glory that is supposed to support us. So the dangerous thing is, you don't get bitter with people who do you bad. Allow God to use them yeah. to make you useful. Allow God to use them to and make, make you useful. useful. In fact, I put it this way. If you are not used in full, you are used less. Used in full makes you useful. We've got a lot of we've got a lot of wisdom words today. <laughs> because I've gone through a lot. A lot of wisdom words today. Quote and yeah. unquote. If you're not used in full, you're not useful. If you are used less, you are used less. When they use less of you, you are used less. Mm -hmm. So use me and make me useful. I had one young boy in O2 then. He finished at O2. And of course, I helped him secure a place for internship at an agency where I was also working then at One for One Worldwide. And this guy was getting paid just 15K. And he wasn't happy. But I kept on telling him, guy, let these people use you and make you useful. Keep learning on the job. One day, you will dictate how much they will pay you. And he listened to me. And sometimes guys will just pack work if they want to go home. He's an art director. They will give him all sorts. You know, and this guy was diligently doing it because he was listening to... Yes. You know, what destroys people is bad advisors. Mm. People tell them, why will you take that nonsense? Resign. Blah, 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 blah. You resign. You could short circuit the process that God wants to use to process you. Mm -hmm. And this guy listening to me, at some point, they started thinking of how to increase his salary. But before they... We are trying to do that. Another agency had called him. Through my Which, contact, yeah. my, my connect, we got to the agency. Salary has been increased to 180K. The guy, they shout. I said, calm down. From 16,000, I'll be 15K. And he didn't stay there for about eight months. Another big multinational called him Good. and tripled the salary. Wow, beautiful. And that multinational that he was working with happened to now become a client to the agency where he started with. You don't get my point. <laughs> Let's say the client is Eva. I don't want to mention the name of the client. It's okay. He is now working with Eva. And Eva is using the XYZ advertising agency as their ad agency. So this guy now is a client to them. And one of the days they came for meeting. It's how the roles have been reversed. Do you understand? Yeah. He called me one day and said, guess what? My creative director just presented to me. I said, that's it. I told you. <laughs> and he took my advice. And guess what? It wasn't up to six months or a year there about. Yeah. That agency started asking him to come and join them again. I told him, build them up. And he actually built He them. actually did. Boy, you need to know <laughs> how much the guy got. <laughs> so imagine he was angry and was complaining and bitter that they are using me. Why? Blah, 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 blah. And maybe I was a bad advisor. Yes. I would have short circuited that process. That would have helped him to be processed. So the call you chief inspiration officer. That's right. You inspire a lot of people. You, you motivate can say that a lot again. of people. But then we notice that when you pour water out of a bottle, the bottle, the water has to, water has to be poured back into the bottle. Who pours back into you? Who inspires it's God. you? <laughs> God. I get my inspiration for God. But you see, I also do something that um, I introduce to a lot of young people, and some say it doesn't work for them. You see, with whom you assemble, you will soon resemble. Mm. 
You cannot bring out what you do not have. True. So I read a lot self-help books, audio tapes, motivational words every morning. I wake up with those things. It charges me up. Mm-hmm. It tells me who I am and why I'm doing what I'm doing. Because the mind needs to be constantly fed yeah. with positive things so that yeah. you will act positively. Yeah. If not, negativity will saturate your heart and cause you to start sowing seeds of discord and doubt. Mm. And before you know it, you start giving up. That's how depression comes. Yeah. Because you need to be inspired in order to do. Because it's action that makes things work. I always tell people, talk is cheap. Execution is worship. Talk is cheap. Execution, execution is, is worship. worship. People can say, oh, I'm coming. Expect me. He won't show up. You know, when you guys invited me, I told him, I said, I'm going to show up. Mm-hmm. And I showed up some 15 minutes before the time. That's yes. discipline. Yes. <laughs> I was going to say that. Yes, you did. Talk is cheap. Execution is worship. Yes. So it's about execution. Mm. It's about execution. And that execution is because you are inspired. If you're not inspired, you won't get up. And what makes you gain inspiration, I want to end with this, Mm. is the picture in your mind. I put it this way. You know, people say, ah, Mr. O, you inspire. You just uh, inspire to aspire. That's what brought me to where I am today. (laughs) Inspire to aspire. (laughs) Whatever you can picture will determine where you can feature. Mm -hmm. Mm. You have to picture the future you want to feature in. Yes. I have pictured being on this studio today. I have gone to your site, to your page. I've seen this studio. I've pictured myself sitting here. So when I was taking my bath in the morning, the picture of this place was constantly playing in my head. That was the inspiration. So people are lazy to do because they cannot picture it is the picture that inspires for you to feature in that. Mm, that's beautiful. That's really profound. Really profound. That's quite deep. Thank you. Uh, I have two more questions before I, okay. I I go to my rapid fire questions. Awesome. <laughs> okay. So, would you say, you talked about discomfort um, yeah, yeah. some minutes ago. Would you say that in the course of building Oxygen Academy, you've had some discomfort yeah. you know, building the company? Yeah. How were you able to come out of that? Okay. Um, I will say that the discomfort was one of the best things that happened to me because, you know, um, I can tell you why we moved from the garage, okay, Mm -hmm. was the whole, the academy is in your house and we knew there's little or more we can do or there's really not much we can do having the school in the house. There are some people we invite, they won't come because it's in your house. And that really shook me. And a lot of pressure from my office. Mm. When I was with the agency, one for one worldwide, you know, you come to the office, people are looking at you like, "Eh, this one, you now run an advertising agency, everybody knows the school and you're still here working as a staff. You see, they gang up against me a lot. And one of the major challenges I faced more than anything was I doze off at the office. So mm. <laughs> sometimes I'm driving home, the sleep will just come, I will pack. Yeah. You know why? I'm training people at night. And my colleagues didn't know that I was training people at night. That was a lot for you. They only thought my trainings were on Saturdays. But I needed to give them more because I believe in the effect of your work speaking for you. I wanted the industry to recognize this school as the best. And I didn't have the money. There was no money to show, to even give instructors. So it was just me. I would train them from 2 o'clock, 3, um, from 11, 12, 1, 2, 3. Sometimes my eyes red. They are begging me, Mr. Oh, you need to go and sleep. I said, don't worry. Mm. And we will play motivational. Oh, my God. So I get to the office Sometimes we were in a, we'll be in a brainstorm session. <laughs> the next thing I've gone off, <laughs> somebody will say, <laughs> See, in fact, at some point they were calling me sleep. They would do cartoons, shows, you know. This thing I'm telling you, some of those my colleagues, 
they can if if I, they are, if you are listening to this they will be laughing because it was real it happened yeah. there was a day i was going home i started feeling sleepy i had to enter ikeja city mall and park Lo and behold, I was sleeping in my car. A colleague of mine saw me in the car, took a video. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. I'm telling you. And posted it on our intranet, you know, in, internal agency. Yeah. Well, so it, those were the challenges. It wasn't smooth, but it was something. I was determined. I was passionate. And I stopped every Saturday event. You can't see me in any... A wedding or never. And you were giving in knowledge. Ah, you Going can't see me. Knowledge. All my Saturdays are booked. And people hated me for that. They say, Ozone, just just block off and everything. But today. It's paying off. How far? It's paying off. It's paying off. <laughs> so what are the future projections? What do you see O2 Academy becoming in the next five years? I won't tell you that. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Why would yeah. you do this? To okay, me? so so yeah, okay. I'll tell you. I'll okay. tell you some part. They they will have some very powerful you know, plans and very solid strategy. But okay. it, it is geared towards helping more Nigerian youths become employable and employers of labor. Mm. And it's going to be on a mass level. And we're coming out big because the plans are on the way and it's very strategic and mm. we know it's going to work. Mm. So it's something that's going to make every young person earn money, even while in school or after school. Because we found out that it's no longer oil economy, it's knowledge-based economy. It is what you can do that will determine how much money that will enter your pocket. Beautiful. That's so right. if you were to see your 20-year-old self right now, what would you tell him? Mm. <laughs> I would just say, be careful who you surround yourself with. Yeah. Stay with the right mental attitude through what you listen to. Yeah. Because your mind is your world. Your mind is your God. Your mind will make or mar your life. Beautiful. That's Thank it. you so much, sir. That's it. Thank you so much, sir. That's it. So our viewers out there would like we like you to say something, like let's say words of marble, words of advice, counsel to young entrepreneurs, young aspiring career, young professionals out there. I'd like to hear what you have to say to them. Okay, um, this is my best part. I, I will tell you, life is never gonna be easy. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be tough, mm -hmm. but the tougher it gets, the better the opportunities and the chances of you scaling through. Mm. Because it's only challenges that makes champions. Mm -hmm. And the truth about it is that if it is easy, everybody else would have, done, would have it. done it. And so when things are going tough, just remember there is a brighter light at the other end of the tunnel. And you have everything it takes for you to achieve everything you want to achieve. Because those who are achieving it, they don't have 20 heads. They only believed and they put in the work. And for one good reason, it's simple. All men are created a war. We all have the same ability that God has put in us. You are man, not man-made. You are God-made. Mm. And so, anything is possible for you. Just believe. And every other thing will follow suit. Put in the work. That was a And your life yeah. will work. That was great. Thank <laughs> you so much, sir. From the Chief Inspirational Officer himself. Thank you That's so right. much, sir. That's Thank right. You so, much. Thank so we're going you. to go through a rapid fire questions. They're just okay. simple questions <laughs> that that uh, just round up questions, right? Wow. That would, would need you to answer in seconds. Hey, you need, <laughs> problem. You don't need to think about it too much. <laughs> so first question, if you were to have a superpower, what would it be? Trust me, I'm not good with this. <laughs> 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 oh God. If what? If you were to have a superpower, what would it be? The issue is I'm trying to still process the information. Ah. My time has gone. <laughs> yes. Please, okay, next we question. Take another one? Would you rather be the smartest person in the world or the wealthiest? Smartest because the smartness will get me. The Money, world. yes. Yeah. Well, great. Well, name a person that inspires you. Miles Mora and Dr. David Obwele. The general overseer of Dominion City. That's my Great. If you could learn any language in one week, 
what would it be? Chinese. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that one coming. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sai. It's been such an honor awesome. and a great time with you today. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we have come to the end of today's episode. Remember, I would like to take you back to some of the things he said. He started with a two-bedroom, a two a two-bedroom flat or a two-bedroom space where he spoke, he taught people. And then from there he moved to a garage and a duplex. And from there he has his own space. And that's how Oxygen Academy was born, was built up. That is a story that inspires me today and I hope it has also motivated you that you can do anything you set your mind to do. Passion is a field that will carry you, you know, forward and forward and you keep on building your, 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 your space, your sector. Thank you so much, sir, for that wonderful words of wisdom. And we have come to the end of today's episode. Thank you so much for staying with us to the end until we come your way again in another episode. You know what? Subscribe, comment, engage and follow us on all social media platforms. Thank you very much. Thank you.